This is gonna be tough. I've trained my body to do things that people like me shouldn't be able to do. But unfortunately for me, flying ain't one of them. Don't follow me. Biologist and archaeologist who we feel is going to be an undeniable asset here at Projexus. Won't you please join me in welcoming her to our team? Dr. Sally Rodell. Adopt or die. Secure the area until Alpha Corps can arrive. It is the truest law of the Earth. Very few things have the ability to survive the test of time. Though we may not be around to see them to their fullest fruition, what we struggle to create now will be the triumphant echoes from the past. Help, Corp, be here in five minutes! Hold the line! Five minutes? <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. I was here. I lived. I am still here. I'm on you. Be dreams, chilled. It is that struggle that is the affliction of creation. I would like to thank Mr. Eusebio for allowing me the opportunity to discover and create alongside my esteemed colleagues at Projectus. Thank you. An archaeologist? It's a bit archaic, isn't it? She's well studied, Jerry, but if you want to question her credentials, be my guest. That's not what I was saying. It's just an unusual area of expertise to pair with biology. Well, Dr. Rodell, from my understanding, is an unusual woman. Don't be threatened, Jerry. She's on our side. Congratulations. Ah, yeah. uh, congratulations. Photo? You took that like a chomp. Were you trying to knock me out? No. It was meant to be a death blow. Yara, stand down. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Rip and the Silverback. And the Silverback. I was just about to say I'm Rip. <laughs> and I'm the Silverback. Yeah. Oh, wow. That could have started a whole <laughs> fucking thing right there. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. <laughs> Every Twitter would have been mad at us then. Oh, fucking man. The whole left, shit. right, up and down. <laughs> uh, I'm a silverback. That's Rip. Uh, welcome. <laughs> it happens. Yeah, it, sometimes. It's, it's how I identify. Yeah, sometimes Come it gets on switched now. up. Nothing wrong with that. How you feel that's more important than anything else, remember. That's what they tell us. Mm. That's what they tell us. Feelings don't works. care about your facts. No, not at all. It's about <laughs> how you feel, bro. Or your biological science. <laughs> or your actual shit. science. <laughs> None of that has anything or to do with Or your common sense or anything. None. None of that has anything to do with anything. How you doing, Eric? I'm doing well, man. Uh, I have uh, been working, obviously, in the middle of this uh, Yara number one campaign. We are gearing up for a lot of the growth that we're having as a company. Uh, I have been instructed to remind everybody that we are hiring locally. Um, so if you go to reverse.com, uh, you can go to the careers page. we got a couple of positions opening up in our warehouse, namely the uh, warehouse positions of more shipping, uh, as well as our warehouse, general warehouse related stuff. Uh, but yes, it is a fun, fun, fun time. And uh, yeah, for the first time in a while, I got a little bit of gaming in, and I've been playing uh, some uh, Dragon's Dogma. Actually, a lot of Dragon's ah. uh, Dogma too. 
Uh, and people know that I was a game that I was uh, really, really stoked about, and I'm uh, I'm having a fucking blast playing it. But uh, other than that, man, I'm good, man. Glad to be here. It's a good game. Oh, I've, yeah. been having, I've been having a good time with it. I've it's been having fantastic. a good time. Yeah. I'm uh, going to get back on it in a minute. I might sneeze. Okay, it doesn't look like there's a sequel on the way. There you go. Wow, it's not a legitimate stream unless I sneeze, by the way. Do you know that? Yeah. That's yeah. that's some that's some deep law into my streaming. Okay, now look, my eyes nearly fell out. <laughs> that was a big one. That was a build-up, man. <clears throat> I'm a, I'm a little bit under the weather. I'm I'm not poorly. I'm just shitting through the eye of a needle right now. Damn. I know. Uh, so I feel rough. fine. And then my yeah. bum will just go, hey, 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 hey. Guess what? Oh, <laughs> fuck off, bum. Fuck off, mate. <laughs> hey, do you fancy going to the bathroom? No. Keep drinking that coffee because you will. You oh, will yeah. eventually. Okay. You will eventually. Yeah, yeah. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> oh, okay. we're doing that, are we? Okay. Ooh, Reet. Yaira, doing all right. Oh, yeah. Uh, less than 10,000 away from uh, 1.3 million. So I'd say it is uh, doing pretty fucking good. Pretty fucking I think well. uh, I checked it about an hour or two ago. It's about $7,500 away from 1.3. Link chat pinned in the uh, comment section up above. Chat, chat, that is not too much shit. Hey, one minute you want to know stuff, next minute you don't want to know stuff. Which is it? You can't have both. Huh? You can't have the good unless you take the bad. You can't have the smooth unless you take the rough. So I'll tell you when I've got a new toy. I'll also tell you when my bottom needs to fucking make a vacation. All right? I'm just telling you. Come on now. <laughs> Keeping it real. I respect it. Yeah. So uh, linked. At the top there, if you want to go support the Yara campaign, it's 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 weird to believe it's only three weeks in. That's it, like three weeks in a day. Yeah, we got like sixty, uh, uh, maybe right under sixty days left. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, uh, we got a ways to go, man. We're just getting, we're just popping this thing off, man. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be interesting to see where it goes, and of course the uh, we had the. Uh, <clears throat> uh what was it? the statue if it hits two million we get the statue yeah 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 we've been uh preparing ourselves for um uh, for something special with that that much i'll say um okay. yeah y'all 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 are gonna want to hit that man that's just that's just all i'm gonna say it's all i can say really ndas and such uh ndas eh yeah you yeah know that, you, know, you know how that does <laughs> you know uh, oh dude we got some good we got some great news this week for ripping the silver back mm -hmm. okay the beg seg is back oh it has a return it's been a been a few weeks since uh, we last had a big sick been at least two mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh this time it's uh <laughs> <laughs> It's a doozy. That's all I can say. It's a doozy. Let's have a look. Let's just start off. Cool. Let's just start Let's off, off with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh... Oh, wait, did I close it? No, I didn't close it down. Hold on. Let's bring... There you are. There you are. Now you're showing. Let's uh, let's have a look-see, shall we? Uh, so, uh... Oh, this was posted this morning from, uh, from Max... I... <laughs> I... Uh. I need a New York-based housing lawyer stat. Oh, no. <laughs> it looks like uh, those squatters' rights may be... Uh, 
maybe not so right after all. Maybe they'd be wrong. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, oh my god! You know, like this is a funny thing because in the business, man. I'm in, business. <laughs> I'm in Texas, right? Like, mm. so people that maybe are not from the U.S. This is like your New York, especially if you're in the city of New York, like New York City, mm. completely different fucking planet than than where I'm at. So. A lot of these conversations, even for me, are difficult to have because I'm like, what the fuck is a is a, is a quote unquote housing lawyer? But obviously we know what that's in reference to because in those general areas, mm. well, uh, you have people and I, I don't know if Mags has uh, saw some property and decided to just set up shop without paying the motherfucking rent. I'm not sure. But just speculation of course it, it of course it's alleged speculations all <laughs> those uh words that are that we yeah. have to, of course throw out there <laughs> yeah because i don't actually know however um if we use our context clues um we use past history <laughs> because it was not long ago if the chat may have forgot Mm. It wasn't that long ago that for Max it was uh, a catastrophic month. catastrophic. Dece- I think it was December. <laughs> well, it was catastro- catastrophic. Best in the business chat, and that's what Max defined it as. Not yeah. a yeah, yeah, yeah. Quote that was a direct <laughs> quote. <laughs> catastrophic, direct. catastrophic month. So if I'm putting two and two together, I'm like, mm. okay, well, she's either. Not paying a rent. Maybe it was an agreement there. She's not paying a rent. Is trying to get out of it. Maybe it is a case of this or whatever the fuck this squatting business is. Um, but she needs it. Stat is Stat. what Max, what Max said, as in right fucking now. So something's going on. Maybe the catastrophic month mm. piled up. Maybe it turned into two catastrophic months. Maybe landlords like, hey man, uh, I haven't got rent since. For three months. Mm. What's up? Hold up. Wait a minute. Where, where, where's Somebody the money, right. Lebowski? It is what <laughs> the... Uh, <laughs> Come on, what? she's got to be sitting on that fat that fat uh, Rebel Moon check. <laughs> That's got to be at least... Four tens, grand. Of, tens of dollars, I'd imagine. Tens of dollars, yeah, okay. I'd imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is just a pro tip, but you need to pay for lawyers. <laughs> oh, no. Of course, we're, we're looking for uh, pro bono. M- yeah, most uh, like. I'd, I'd imagine that uh, this would be a case of um, do me a solid. <laughs> because... <laughs> I've just had a catastrophic because this has been a catastrophic month <laughs> lifetime, <laughs> and and uh, yeah, that's a great point actually. Like mm. you need a lawyer. Well, how you got? I'd imagine that you would need the lawyer because of money issues. Yeah, lack, lack of funds. Uh, yeah. So how the fuck do you pay for the lawyer? Um. Through love bombing, I, I, I potentially. I will that's pay a, that's, you in HRT. This is what I'm guessing is going to happen. Expecting to get invoiced and not ever paying the shit for services, because often that's how uh, how it works with lawyers, right? It's uh, more, sure. um, you know, you're accumulating the hours, and then after the month or whatever, they're going to then bill you. I'm guessing she's skipping out on that fucking payment. <laughs> well, all I can say is I I hope that it gets a uh, pro bono lawyer to help them with their property. <laughs> Are they ever going to get work again? Are they getting work for DC next? It's somebody. Because she did announce, as we've talked about in the bag seg before, that there was some 
character that will that is uh, for some sort of major publisher mm. that they will be transient and they they're blacklisted by DC. <laughs> well, they'd be fools not to. Sorry. It's my bad. Um, but yeah, so I, I I'm not sure what else is. Well, we know. Remember what is it? What was it? What was that uh, thing that they wrote that was with that obscure publisher? What was it called? Girl Mode or something? I can't remember what it Fragrant was. Fragrant Queen. No, not that one. It was. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Girl, uh, girl Mode. Yeah. Girl Mode, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Where uh, a bunch of dudes were pretending to be ladies. <laughs> that one. Maybe some uh, royalties have come from that. <laughs> no! <laughs> you have to make a profit to get royalties, Eric. Okay, that is very true. Well, I am, um, the way that I see it is I need a Brazil based decent sport. These boys love your stat. Oh, man. Shout out. Hey, Brazil. Man. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, Mm. I, 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 like we told you last time, Max, get a job. Because uh, if you get a job, you mm. will be able to maybe pay for the rent. If, if, if I'm, I'm just guessing that that's the problem, because then you can pay for the rent, and then you would need a housing lawyer. Yeah, but if you get a job, it kind of curtails a grift, you know. <laughs> Yeah. That you're holding a an industry to ransom true. because of identity politics. And, That's true. Uh, Can't be. I, I, I don't know how uh, catastrophic it was for them when Sean Gordon Murphy had to get his lawyer involved. Shut them the fuck up. But I'm imagining that that might have been a little bit catastrophic for them. I'd imagine. Um, e Look, uh, I hope. Well I, well, I would say hope. Uh, <laughs> Nobody cares. That, that's not the. That's not the pro proper thing there. Certainly not you or I. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure somebody hopes that mm. <laughs> the landlord maybe hopes. Yeah, hopes that you can get this shit. Hopes that you fucking pay his fucking rent. <laughs> landlord probably is uh, hoping that you can get this thing situated. Therefore, you can pay the rent. Mm. Uh, and uh, yeah, because uh, that's uh, uh, sure there may be other issues that can occur when you are living in a house that would require you to have a housing lawyer. But I'm not convinced. Well, a lot of those issues that would that I can think of off the top of my head will require you to own the property. Sure. And I'm not convinced that they own jack shit. Therefore, they had to be renting. And therefore, I am believe, and especially in New York. I'm under the assumption, I'm under the guesstimations, if you will, that there's something going on with that lease. Somebody probably is not getting paid. And but can I just caveat that? Yes, yes. Somebody else other than Max who isn't getting paid. Yes. <laughs> that isn't getting paid. That isn't getting the money. And therefore, they are trying to weasel their way out of that uh, through using uh, the the legal BS. I mean, of course, living in the area that she's in, they, them, Sherm, are in. <laughs> then, <laughs> Shout out, Odin. <laughs> they have a lot of uh, 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 far more avenues that they can travel, um, which makes it... Um, easier for a person like a max to come out on top uh and maybe get out of paying fees for um a property that they are staying in uh perhaps that they have not been paying for so the way i see it they should get a job they won't get a job and that lawyer's not getting paid so anybody that's connected to this thing is fucked Landlords fucked, lawyers fucked, 
because this housing lawyer, again, you're going to take the gig with the expectation that, hey, we're going to get a little money and the money's never going to come. And here you are. Invoice will be long, 30 days past due, past balance, no intention of paying that shit. And there'll be another catastrophic month. And then you'll need a housing lawyer for the housing lawyer because <laughs> because they're gonna need to get, they're gonna come to collect you know it's a that's how debt works right it's this perpetual yeah. cycle right it's like yep. uh, one of those perpetual cycles so the, the, that the housing lawyer that they got to help with the squad situation will need to get paid then they'll issue some shit and then they're looking for another housing lawyer to combat the housing lawyer which was mm. used to combat the landlord which was used because uh they can't own property so uh yeah um maybe rebel moon part two when does that do oh uh, god uh next month okay so part two maybe that is just killer so killer that that people get so stoked that they go by uh part all, the of, prequel. all of the merch everything everything yeah. merch yeah. everything go get the mm. prequel right and then that means that Mags, I'm picked, who's hand selected by Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder, mm. who well, should probably paid. He, he, they, them, it, uh, whatever. Probably slagged off to shit during the whole Snyderverse business. Snyder Cup business. Correct. Mm. So eventually, maybe there's 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 a light at the end of the tunnel, and there's a way that Mags could get paid. So the housing lawyer can get paid. So the so the mm. landlord can get paid, and um, everybody's happy in New York. Mm. But that's just wishful thinking. Mm. Uh, get a job. <laughs> that would be the logical thing to do. I guess would be call to... up DSP. <laughs> Both of you can work out employment. <laughs> it's New York. There's plenty of convenience stores and mm. McDonald's and. All sorts of shit out there that, that they could get to um, get paid for sure. Mm. Yeah, but that involves working. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't see that person doing that. Um, I don't. I don't see that. Per and look, a lot of creep. I always have to use creative. In quotes, because I don't want people thinking that I'm I'm like explicitly stating that Mags is like a creative person. I'm just saying that losing that term <laughs> term loosely. Well, they in real realistically, they probably got paid about four grand from for that roundabout four or five grand, probably tops. So that that's how, uh, I don't know how long that prequel is. The other uh, the, the uh, page count of that is. Because 48 page. All right. So, yeah, if it's 48 pages, they may have got around four grand to do it for sure. For sure. I, I can see that four to five grand to, to do that. To do that. Um, Rebel Mall. That money's gone. Um, probably paid off some other debt. Um, or some medication. Um, uh, True. To you, you got to keep up with that type of stuff. So, um, <laughs> it's a good point. Um, Chai, Chai, it, it's just really hard to have sympathy for somebody who's a fucking piece of shit individual. That's that's the problem. That's the problem. When you make your bed, you fucking lie in it. When you show everybody who you are, and then you want to do this kind of stuff, you are literally appealing to the same people who are in the same boat as you. Unless, of course, you start your GoFundMe's, in which case you hold your industry to ransom because you have to make them uh, non-confidentially proclaim their support. So uh, I don't care. <laughs> Is where I'm coming from. I don't give a fucking shit. I can respect they that. They don't deserve to be in the industry. They have no fucking talent. They've outstayed their welcome by about fucking eight years already. They've taken the place of somebody who could have actual talent and could have actually put out some good stuff. They took the money out of uh, that person's pocket that could have ingratiated the industry, but they didn't. 
because it's all about them at the end of the day. It's not about comics. It's not about enjoying the industry. It's not about any of that. No, it's just uh, it's just a big old fashioned. Uh, let's keep everybody at um, under the thumb. We've got Gail Simone. What doing the doing some doing an X Men book? Why fucking dog shit? That's so dog shit. I haven't written anything uh, even half decent for in 15, 16 years. Yeah, um, well, Max is a Glad Media Award nominated, though. <laughs> well, that... I think two years in a row. <laughs> so... I woke up you gotta today. take that oh, in a good actually I'm looking it up now. Three years in a row. My bad. Back to back to back nominations. Like, like Drake. Yeah. Back like, to Drake. Back. Yeah. like Drake. Yeah. yeah. Um <laughs> Glad Media Award nominated for outstanding comic book. <laughs> that's the name of the uh that's the media award. It's the Glad Media Award for Outstanding Comic Book. Oh, and yeah. I mean, outstanding can be very liberally expressed. <laughs> I mean, Maybe some outstanding bad. payments associated yeah. with it because, <laughs> because they're in the fucking red. But... Outstanding rent. I'll make a yeah. word. <laughs> this goes to the the writer who has the most outstanding rent <laughs> while apparently getting work in the industry. I hear uh, P. Diddy might have a room or two free in his house now. <laughs> Maybe you want to hit him up if you can find him in New York. <laughs> I think he's in Brazil right now. Well, like. now nah, who the believe it? Who the fuck knows? Who, do, who knows? Hey, but, uh, but holy shit, <laughs> that's kind of just we're talking about it on FN uh, Real BBC yesterday. I was like, you know, let's just wait for some. Let's you know, we don't know anything yet. Let's yeah. wait for. And I was looking online last night, and I was I was kind of like, oh. Yeah. Oh, just picked up some fucking little white girl on the street and adopted her. Oh, <laughs> this is yeah. this is getting big oof. Yeah, that's gonna be a problem. Uh, but I mean, you know, I'm looking at some of the accolades. They did also get nominated Mags for an Eisner. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, if that Eisner's rolling, rolling in his damn fucking might as well just give him a fucking McDonald's gold star. That's all that's <laughs> worth anymore. That means nothing, that's nothing. True. That's true. Uh, but it was for the best limited series. Um, <laughs> it wasn't ongoing. But... Well, yeah, it was for the best. But it became limited. limited very quickly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Remember probably, when... That's probably what happened. Like quite literally, like. Uh, it was but, always uh, meant to be a limited series. Yeah, what the whole time. Gemini. But uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> look, Max had a run from about there to 2017 to maybe up to 2020. I mean, naming some of these things that they had. Um they were did, they did uh, Doom Patrol, they did <laughs> oh, uh they did that oh yeah, that Eternity Girl, which only uh, look. Did they do like things. Kim and was it Kim and Kim? Kim and Kim was one. I think that's what they got nominated for. D uh, didn't even finish. Yeah. So it, Eternity it was a Girl. Six -parter. They I'm released five parts, and the sixth part came out with a trade paperback, which didn't fucking sell. It was selling so shit, it, they didn't even finish the fucking thing off. So Eternity Girl. I'm gonna was be that support? Because I know it went six issues. But I wonder if it was meant to go six issues with DC. Yeah. Um, they did Action Comics. They did this Connor Kent story, and we know what they wanted to do with Connor Kent. Uh, you what? Yeah, I'm just looking at some oh. of his accolades uh, here. Also, did well if we move over to Marvel, they did a mm. Secret Empire Star Brand story. Oh, I can guess what the secret is. <laughs> uh, they did a Dazzler story <laughs> in 2018. And of course, they did the Magnificent Miss Marvel Annual uh, in 2019. 
Um, for whatever reason, Oni Press, which is Oni still around, or did they go under? Let me look it up. I'm gonna get my facts straight quick, real quick. Uh, no, they're still around. Oh, uh, catastrophic month. Um, yeah, they just got a new EIC last year. Okay, so they did for whatever reason do Rick and Morty, which I don't know what screams Rick and Morty about. Uh, and they had a lot of issues. There's several issues of, of Rick and Mo Morty, like a bunch. And they did, they did this little offshoot. They did a lot of Rick and Morty. That's that's interesting. Of course, we know Vagrant Vagrant Queen. Um, we we do know about that. They did some. They did my. Um, they did a short story with Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. <laughs> so this? when I'm as I'm naming all this stuff, like they what As brought up, Morphin. I think is so very important. Is you got to look at it from that lens i guess in this person is getting hired to do these gigs over a mass amount of talent that especially during that period of time was starting to get ostracized mm -hmm. uh so that's the the grams the the chuck dixons of of the world uh and so forth so yeah that's where your money was spent uh and yeah apparently that i don't know what the unannounced project that they have working on uh it's funny that redline comics <laughs> redline comics has a comic that they did called andrew jackson in space but they did it as brian oh I wonder, I, I wonder how much that is worth i'm about to go look it up i'm gonna speculate fuck all yeah it was on kickstarter no even and, better. Uh, on, on kickstarter uh it had it made a uh, um a great amount of money and five thousand dollars and yeah it was under brian though brian did it really yeah it was under brian's name right uh and then i guess they had a catastrophic cat maybe that's what happened maybe that's what mm. sent them to go, to go that route there was a catastrophic month and then they said Fuck it i'm going trans Um, because by 2017, right, they were going as as uh, mags. Hmm. Hmm. So yeah, as early as 2015. Yeah. No, as 2017, because Stronghold four to seven was done as Brian. So I guess with 20. Hmm. If you okay. first, you don't succeed. I'm gonna point this out real quick. Okay, now tell up until then there is zero work that I'm looking at that Brian is outside of the stronghold stuff. What's doing? Um, so do they were doing stronghold? They did some book called Sanctuary as Brian, right? 2017 happens, and it looks like that was the goal. That was the year where Brian decided to be Max, and then that's where all the gigs came from. That's, Crazy, huh? It's it's kind of odd how that lined up. Because, Maybe talent isn't proportional to penis size. Because I mean, looks like Brian was at least doing comics since 06. <sighs> and it was it was these again through red line, so very small publisher. Um did the stronghold thing, and then 2017 happens. And then we got Rick and Morty in 2017. We got um, the, El uh, the Element Girl stuff with DC, the Eternity Girl. All that's in 2017. So that was that. That's the trick. If you want to make it in mainstream comics, that's that's quite the quote unquote grift, huh? I mean, it's I, a committed one. You got to at least give Max that that <laughs> respect because that's a fucking commitment. I I know. Zero respect whatsoever. I mean, that's going through great lengths, though. Uh, that is definitely going at great lengths. <laughs> to that is definitely going above and beyond to get the work. Uh huh. You know, so I mean, come on, you gotta give them credit for cutting the shit off. I don't know if they went that far. No. Oh, th they have apparently. Yeah. Okay, so they they mm. the shit's cut off. Mm. Um. 
Rod inserted. Well, um, that happened, and then the gigs came. Uh, Vagrant, Vagrant Queen was the next year in 2018, and uh, they sold that off for free. Um, and even did a Transformers. <laughs> Ain't touching this with the badge, bro. Did a Transformers book, too, uh, in 2018. So, yeah. Oh. Um, uh, through IDW. Through IDW. Yes. Okay, hi. Here's a Transformers book that doesn't belong to IDW because <laughs> IDW lost the Transformers franchise because nobody was buying Transformers comics from IDW because IDW drove it into the ground by making Transformers fucking gay and trans. Uh, you this, got, by the way, you got five uh, issues from from X. This is really <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> I don't know if anybody did, if we want to get technical. Uh, I sure as hell fucking didn't. But this, this is good stuff. I'm uh, I'm up to date after six issues now, and it's uh, it's actually really good stuff. But aren't they... Let me see. I want to... Before I... Before I... Uh, hey, hey, Sasuke's up. in the chat. See, Sasuke's in the chat. How you doing, ladies? Before I, uh, like, say something that maybe is not true, let me, let me look this up. Uh... Yeah, you, and you have a flash as well. The image Transformers and G.I. Joe comics are amazing and not gay. I know. the, the trans. I haven't read the uh, the G.I. Joe stuff, so uh, I'm going to pick up the Cobra Commander and the Duke. I'm not going to touch uh, Scarlet because that's Kelly fucking Thompson. Kelly Thompson has me blocked. I didn't know of that. Course. Of course. I've never interacted with Kelly. There was yeah, a time. Look, I'll be fair. Monumentally racist. Because... <laughs> Because there was a time, like when I was mm. obviously really deep into reading modern comics, that I was, I was doing a video or something, and I was mm. referencing something that she was. How doing shit they the were, time. and how, well, how shit they were, and what a horrible human being they are. So I can for sure along those lines. I can for sure see that probably had a lot to do with me getting uh, uh, with me getting blocked there. But yeah, I mean, it is. I mean, it was a weird era, man. That you had all the that's the, that's the, I'd argue and lump those people into the same kind of pot of folks that just kind of came out of nowhere in the mags of the world, the the uh, the Kelly Thompsons and what? Because wasn't Kelly just a like was they weren't they writing like with the Mary Sue and that was mm. about it? Mm. And then next thing you know, you got Captain Marvel, Black Widow. And then uh, Heidi Deadpool. McDonald, of course, was C was it CBR Heidi McDonald? Now they're just fucking poison. What what's that? What's that pro? What is that? Comics beat. That's what I think. The, Comics beat was that yeah, the one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Comics beat. Sorry, but, when you look at dog shit, after a while, it all just looks the same. Bleeding the bleeding yeah. asshole with Dick Dixon. Uh, yeah. uh, CBR yeah. Comics <laughs> beat. It's mm. the same. It's the same shit. Shout out Dick Dixon was the only time Shout he fucked Tim Sheridan. Him. Yeah, and Tim Sheridan and L. John for sure. A uh, lot, lot quicker this week. Sorry yeah, about last week. Yeah, yeah. We didn't we didn't wait till two hours into the show before we gave you a shout out, Elton and uh, Tim Sheridan. But yeah, Dick Dixon only writes about the Riververse when it's a hit piece. Um, but yeah, um, those guys. Uh, hey, look, that era twenty late that latter half of the twenty tens, right? And you started to see these kind of weirdos start to pop up. You started to see there be some real, real big changes. I, I think it started with all new, all different. But I really think that was more of the launching pad. After yeah. that is when you started to get all these people kind of brought into the fold that maybe didn't belong. And by what I'm meaning by that, I'm, I'm regarding the talent, right? I'm regarding like, okay, look, this is supposed to be the upper echelon. This is comics, mainstream comics. You start, you're bringing in the best talent. Uh, to to especially write some of your more prominent characters. I'm not sure if you give Black Widow to a Kelly Thompson. Not sure if you give a a Deadpool to to to, to a Kelly Thompson. I'm not I'm not exactly sure. Kelly Sue DeConnick running a fucking muck both companies because they gave her Aquaman for some fucking reason. These DC DC is a remor is a remarkable company because a lot of what we gripe and complain about DC is like five years late and they still yes. replicate it. Right? Yeah. So, so it's like. Hey, can we copy your homework? Yeah, can we copy your homework? Can we do what you did that fucked up? That's the yes. it's not it's no one thing to be like, okay, you did something that was very successful. Maybe there's a version of that that makes more sense for our company that can also be successful in the given market. I'm pretty sure that happens in in ba basically every industry. But that's not what we're talking about. They say we're gonna do all new, all different. 
It bombs. And then, like, what? That was during the DC fandom, they're fucking bragging about Future State, which is the same shit. That's how Future State was. It's gonna, hey, we're gonna put gay no or oh, non-binary flash. Um, we're gonna have all these versions of the characters that you can't fucking recognize. Black Batman. We're gonna have the the uh, worst choice for Batman ever with Luke. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> thing with Jiggy. Praise yeah. The, praise the present. Oh, DC uh, fandom. Wonder why another one of those didn't happen. Um, yeah, fantastic. Luke Fox. Yeah, Luke. Yeah, the being um, it was it was. It was yeah. Was it Luke? It was one of the nephews for yeah, sure. Yeah, they put uh, they, they 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 put Luke yeah, Fox. Made in, a, in, I don't remember yeah. which one was Black Batman, but yeah, uh, you know, start doing it's all not that. Not as weird. if he had all, any any other actual legitimate uh, choices to take over, like Tim, Dick, uh, Jason, Jason. Uh, you know, fucking even John Paul. John, would yeah, leave, Ezreal. Leave the, yeah, fuck it. Maybe throw even Anarchy in there is probably a more more qualified uh fucking character. Jesus um, Christ, they put fucking Jim Gordon as Batman in the <laughs> new 52. It's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever seen. Uh, new 52. Uh, Shave my mustache off and did some weights of Batman now. No, you're fucking not. Shut up. <laughs> oh, fucking new 52, man. Um, oh, but yeah, it, it's the copy of the home. That was the start of the rot for DC. Oh, well, don't get me started. And then you get like a year or two of some, okay, hey guys, we fucked up with New 52, here's Rebirth, and we're just going to be firing on all cylinders, and then we're going to bring in Bendis. Mm. Yeah, we've done this talk. And uh, then Tom King's going to go through something. He's going to go through a crisis. Uh, a, a mental breakdown? Um, and his work maybe is going to be... always been there. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, look, because like I said, I, I remember giving high praise to Batman right out of um like rebirth right same um and that was all I, about I tom even king. added tom king tom king even appreciate them like the tweets yeah yeah uh because it was it started off good it, it legitimately started off good then it fell off a fucking cliff yeah yeah yeah, um, I don't know what happened. It had been something personal. Because, I mean, look, I don't know when he wrote uh, the Heroes in Crisis shit, but which was a fucking colossal. Is that the worst book that I've read? Like, as far as character assassination is concerned. Uh, but it did destroy multiple characters. I'm, I'm trying to think of something in recent here that I could... Because, look... For me, I'm a, I'm a big story guy. Name, name uh, a character that came out of Heroes in Crisis looking good. Not even fucking... Uh, no one. Not even Harley. No. No. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Like, what... Is there another book that I Certainly could... Certainly not Booster Gold. Certainly not Harley. Certainly not Batman, Superman, or Wonder Woman. Certainly not Flash. Certainly not Wally West, White Wally West, not Black Wally West, FYI. Uh, certainly not Arsenal, certainly not anyone that went in front of the camera and had a fucking cry in the little fucking struggle session that Batman set up yeah, for Batman everybody, heroes for and villains. Yeah. Because they, they have psychological problems and everybody Jeez. needs to go go speak to a robot. No, Tom, Tom King has got psychological problems and he's <laughs> go fucking speak to somebody. It was a fall from grace, uh, for sure, because I had nothing but positive things to say about Batman. And look, for me, it's I don't approach it. I'm a customer, general customer. Right. So uh, I think customers look at things differently from peers. Peers will probably try to analyze, OK, all the, the literary bullshit. Most customers don't care about any of that shit. What rules you follow? And most customers don't give a fuck about that uh, unless they have aspirations to be like a peer of yours. Customers just more so are going to be like, hey, all right, it's OK. Uh, or I, I didn't like this and that about the story. And often, most times, I'd argue maybe 90 plus percent of the time, it's it's pertaining to the actual story yes. in terms of how it how it impacts said character. Right. Clay um, art was incredible in that. Yeah. In, in yeah. Heroes in Crisis. So it, it, it boils down most of the time to garbage writing. Yes. Because even even artwork, which is maybe not your style that you pr appreciate, uh, if, if the writing is good, it can flow very well indeed. Still, mm -hmm. but if if the writing is bad, even if the art is good, it's obvious. 
And so you have this amazing, you know, these amazing pencils by Clay Mann. The inks were good. The coloring was good. In terms of look, looking like a comic, it looked like a good comic. Great covers, great variant covers on the files. But the writing was fucking horrific. Yeah. Not and bad, horrific. It's horrific because, again, who they fucking assassinated. Um, it, it, it's... I didn't. I didn't understand. It's such a weird story altogether. What was that shit like? Six issues. And imagine uh, me because I was seven issues. Okay, so I was. Uh, I'm just going to the comic book shop every month. Like, fuck, man, this shit is. This is an interesting way to, place to take this character. Uh, you basically turn Wally into a fucking murderer, and I don't know why you did it. I don't know whose idea it was. Um, but no, they had to. They had to rehab Wally immediately afterwards. They, they, they had to really compensate for what Tom King fucked up in Heroes in Crisis. How the fuck does that even get past? That's 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 the conversation that needs to be had. Because I mean, he can write whatever he wants, right? Uh, at sure. the end of the day, it's up to up to the uh, editorial and the leadership to be like, "Yeah, that's that's not a good idea. We're not doing that." Not happening. It's just not happening. You can write it, whatever. Um, keep it keep it in a chamber, but we're not fucking we're not publishing this. But they did. Uh, and it, it just happened to be around the same time that Batman was going through his mental issues and and like oh. with Catwoman and shit. And I, I, I and so I let, look, I don't know if he wrote them all at the same time, but they were released as if they were. So I'm thinking like this man's going through something. He's going through. He's, he's former a, CIA, right? A non-hero in crisis. <laughs> he, he's former CIA or something. Yeah. FBI was it? What, what of them? CIA. CIA, mm. right? So maybe he's seen some shit. I don't know. Yeah. He's, he's had to make up so much shit. Yeah. So just had to character assassinate so many people and, and frame so many other people. <laughs> maybe it just took a toll on him. Perhaps. And, and he, he wants to cry to his mummy. And he had to, and he had his form of. Uh, and now he therapy. wants to get fisted by a woman. That's his new Wonder Woman thing. Let her fist you. Let her put it inside. Have you not seen that? Yeah, man. You've seen that. I've You've seen, seen that. It. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah he's in, he wants to get fisted by Wonder Woman. Awesome. Yeah, I, I just. Man, what a what a study that would be. It's like I'm willing. Good to Good news. Get... He's uh, he's on uh, James Gunn's. Uh, yeah, fantastic. Team, yeah, the guy mm -hmm. that wrote Heroes in Crisis, fucked up Batman. Uh, what a fall from great. Look, people are able and free, let's say that, as, as creative people, to write maybe a story that did or didn't land, right? With the sure. audience as far like that, that that's forgivable, right? Nobody's tripping off of, okay, well, this story wasn't my favorite of it. I didn't hate it, but that's, that's, that's one, but that's not what happened. What we had was, and for me, I think the turning point was after the War of Jokes and Riddles. Because I don't know if people remember that. That was uh, it was a really really cool scene that Tom I gave Tom King so much credit for. And then after that, it just went to shit. But there's a scene that he wrote, which told me he at least understood, not necessarily Batman, but more the dynamic between Batman and Joker, right? Because you know Batman, uh, because of uh, 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 the, the Riddler and all the shit that's going mm. down, Batman is basically about to fucking snap, right? And uh, he had like a knife, I think it was, right? And now, again, was he really going to uh, stab fucking Riddler? Who the fuck knows? But what Joker did during that scene was so impactful because it shows that they need each other, right? Essentially, because Joker puts his hands and hand in the way and he basically takes the knife. Takes the knife, yeah. Takes the knife right through the hand, right? And he's uh, essentially, stop. he wants to, he, he, imagine that, he wants to stop him because at that point, that would mean Batman is no longer really Batman, right? Yes, if he, if it, he, it would. Yes, it, it would, it, it would he, cause he the descent. He doesn't want the descent. Right, exactly. Joker, Joker wants the hero to go up against. Bingo. Mor the, the morally incorruptible. Yes, exactly. So he prevented him from doing that, which showed that he, he really understands that, that dynamic. After that shit, that fucking book was a chore to read. Between the shit, it was also like 
what the fuck was going on half the time? Like I said, you had this wedding thing building up and Batman's going fucking crazy. Thomas I, fucking Wayne just appears. Yeah. yeah. Thomas and, fucking Wayne that did happen. That did happen. just, just suddenly I, fucking appears in that our book world. Made, it starts to make no fucking sense, bro. <laughs> And then after shortly after, you know, uh the shit that happened with um with um what's his name? Fucking Alfred basically getting fucking then Fuck, Bane you know, doing his Alfred, fucking yeah. thing trying to take over God. It was a fucking mess, man. That whole fucking shit. I had it was like Tom King had a million ideas and was going through something. Didn't, and he didn't said, know how to land one of them. <laughs> he said, Fuck it, I'll be dumping it all right. Fuck here. We're gonna have 17 things going on here. Nobody knows what the fuck's going on. Uh, I, just, I just remember going to, to, to Bane with Gotham Girl, like walking into the room with Bane. Fucking Gotham, I forgot about Gotham got Girl. Fucking Thomas Wayne stood next to me, like. <laughs> and even the Gotham Girl thing was weird because it's like it was, uh, you know, it started off. I was, and then I know as they started to try to explain kind of how Gotham Girl became Gotham Girl, and then like. It, none of the shit was making sense, right? It was like, oh, he's on a, uh, uh, her and her brother is doing all this uh, for the weird shit. She gets powers and all that. And I remember reading through that multiple times, and I'm like, Tom King, man, I don't know what the fuck's going on half the time with this with this era of Batman. But look, the work's out there. I was praising it for sure when uh, it was early on in it, and then it took a turn. And then Heroes in Crisis came out. And uh, people, was it Miracle Man or something that he was doing as well? Miracle Man, yeah. Uh, he was doing, I think that was Black Label, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, they, they DC lashed all the way on to, to Tom King. Like, that's their didn't guy. He, didn't he do Miracle Man before Batman? I can't remember. I can't I think remember. he did Miracle Man before, I think he did Miracle Man before Batman. I can't remember. And that's uh, what gave him people just like, oh, this is you. Yeah. But he, he, I mean, he was giving everything, man. Um, he's giving the world, and he's still obviously over there doing his thing. Yeah, um, he's, he's pledged not to rape anyone. Yes, he has pledged mm -hmm. because, yeah, uh, doing Wonder Woman stuff. Um, uh, he did that Supergirl book that is being adapted by the person he's working with now as well, um, mm. and James Gunn. So. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure everybody's looking forward to that because of all mm. Supergirls to adapt in wow. this new world. You go with Tom King. Mm. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, great, great move off to a fantastic start. Um, get you really stoked about DC. Ooh, <sighs> yeah, not so much. Not so much. I wonder if uh, Max is going to get brought into the writer's room for... DC because they did after all do some comics. Yeah, they're gonna have stuff. a tin they're gonna have a tin cup and they're gonna go round each one while they put money into it. Okay. And they I respect say that. thank you. I've had a well, I don't, I don't even know what to say thank you. They just say I've had a catastrophic month. Catastrophic month. month. Mm. Are you wanting coffee? No. Money. <laughs> Arms for the poor. So, uh, yeah, shout out Tom King. Uh, mm. What is he doing? Uh, outside of Wonder Woman, what all do they have him doing right now? I'd imagine oh, I don't know, they're... probably crying. <laughs> well, probably crying and getting fisted by his mum also. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what his weird kink is. I don't know what his mental fucking stability is. But, uh, my God, he can't write for shit no more. Every see time what... I see something from him. Admittedly, I, I i mean, I gave up on that Batman run. I gave up. You had to. I, I know I tapped out for sure, eventually. So, uh, you know, I just get sent pages. I'll get sent, hey, you seen this? I'll get sent a page and I'll just be like, how are they working? How? how? It's still, I don't know. It's still got them on the line. They're working, getting promoted up as well. Holy shit. What was it? Yeah. Batman was on selling about 100,000. A month when he took over, and by the time he finished, it was on about sixty thousand. I'm about to check. And that out shipped. Real quick. That's not even selling. That shipped, of course, because those are ship numbers. 
I, I, I want to check this out because he did something. Did they kickstarted this project? Because I remember hearing about it, but I didn't cover it. Um, you know, he did that project with with Boom, um, f- of some property that he created. Uh, or he was at least part of that team. Yes, uh, Jesus Christ! I, 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 I couldn't discount that. So yeah, he did a book called Animal Pound with Boom. Right. Uh, which was last year. They didn't put that through Kickstarter, did, did they? I don't think they did. No, that went that went that was direct market. So I would have been interested to know, interested to know, okay, Tom King not attached to Batman or DC or some major thing doing an original property. How well does that do? Um, it's difficult to say. I mean, look at um John Gordon instance, Murphy. Yeah, look at Sean Gordon Murphy's uh plot holes. Yeah. What was that three hundred thousand? Uh, that that was it. I mean, and that's Sean Gordon Murphy. That should do a fuck ton more than that. Yeah. And, and he's not a better he's not better than Sean Gordon Murphy. No, sure. not he even can't close. hold a candle to Sean Gordon Murphy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sean Gordon Murphy's not just a good writer, but he's a very good artist, artist as well. Yeah, yeah. So he's got a he's got a two for one there. And he's, you know, his artwork sold sold over a million dollars worth of artwork last year. You know, this this guy's hot hot property. But yeah. the uh, the mishandling of of his uh, Kickstarter with with plot holes that should have that should have done huge. That should have done pushing a million more. Yeah, you know, particularly particularly with the um, like how hot crowdfunding was at that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and 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 the all, all the uh, the assets that he had access to in terms of promotion, yep, mainstream promotion, not just internal comic, you know, circle jerks, um, actual talent, which is obviously a plus. Should have yeah. done so much more, so much more. Yeah, uh, and he was he was coming hot, very hot off uh, White Knight. Which was brilliant. Oh, that, that's what I. That's what I was. I'd made that point before, and why I, I I think that any creator should look at that as a because we had an example. And look, um, big shout out to Sean Gordon Murphy. I actually was um, talking with him not too long ago, and it's a harsh reality that I think a lot of people need to understand. And I think the mainstream doesn't. Well, I halfway think they don't understand, but I also think they do in some cases because. Well, maybe that's why they fight tooth and nail to protect the mainstream, because if they have to go out on their own, have a property that's not attached to a DC or a mega corporation that can subsidize them either in page rate or whatever. If that goes away, what do they have? Because you have an example like that, which, again, that's a successful campaign, but. The vast majority of y'all can't do anything close to what. Sean Gore Murphy can do. Not because you're, you're not a draw. Mm. The draw maybe is, well, not maybe. The draw is the property. The draw isn't you. There's very, I say this all the time. There's very few people in comics that can call their own shots. Most Mark of them are Millar. artists. Mark Miller. He'll go uh, to say, Mark Miller, when he puts his stuff out, which he's just doing for love, by the way. Yeah, because he's already he'll got go, he'll go into, multi-millions of dollars. Yeah. He'll go into second prints, third prints half the time because there's an actual demand. Actual demand there. Right. Yeah, he's... um. So there's very few guys. I think Jay Scott Campbell, some of the artists that are around, they can call their own shots. Alex mm-hmm. Ross. Alex Ross, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's few and far between, man. A lot of these guys, even if people see you as a decent writer or artist when it comes to actually being a draw you're not that right it's like people may like it people may enjoy it but then you go off and do your own thing you're not you're not guaranteed to make a fucking millions of dollars it's just not how how it works and i think that's a harsh reality that a lot of people should find out because sean gordon murphy was coming off what was incredible uh for him like he's basically at the peak of his career Mm. And he does something that we can more so look to like in a in a crowd fund. And it does well. Right. It does. It does well. But you look at that and like just because you have a name 
or people that, that you were working on a popular property, Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, does not mean that that audience is going to cross over and follow you like you're that good to where or that much in demand that the audience is going to follow you wherever you go. There are very, very, very few people in comics that can do that. Very, very few. Very few people can do that in which the audience is going to follow them wherever the fuck they go. You can name your price. Doesn't matter. Whatever you're attached to, everybody's going to be falling over themselves to get it. But yeah, like you get these guys, they do a Kickstarter or something like that. And it, and it does. Sometimes it doesn't do well at all, even though they were working. They, they're mainstream. They've done all these things because they're not really to draw. But I, I don't th I don't think his campaign, his Kickstarter campaign for for plot holes was it was so subdued. Mm. It was like almost that uh, there was a stigma going around within the mainstream about crowdfunding because of the crowdfunding that. That, that. that was going on at the moment. So he didn't he didn't want to kind of like push it when he should have been really pushing it. This is his own IP. Mm -hmm. This is his own, you know, this is your, your, your own brand new stuff. So it just felt so muted. Didn't hear anything. Didn't hear anything at all. Didn't hear anything in promotion. And and we know he's got he's got access to all of that. And it just seems so me almost like uh not embarrassed, but uh kind of like a, a, a little not not ashamed, but something something like that. Yeah, like, something yeah. in between. To, yeah, to, I not, see to that. not really look, push that campaign. Look, you gotta understand, like, there's a, a certain I, I, I think he, wasn't he also just kind of coming off the whole thing with Doug to Naples? Um, mm. because he was going to do a cover for Doug to one of D Doug to Naples, uh, crowdfunding, and that got him some shit in the uh, the mainstream because uh, Doug yeah. to Naples man bad, yeah, uh, <laughs> and Earth, Earthworm Jim man bad, uh, yeah, Earthworm Jim man <laughs> bad, and all, and all of that kind of stuff. So there was like there was some factors sort of surrounding it, and so yeah. I mean nowadays now if if he was to put plot holes out today for crowdfunding I guarantee you it, it would be a completely different kettle of fish in terms of the way that it would be pushed marketed uh etc yeah well I, I think for some people they have to realize that <sighs> okay I, let's start at square one Marvel and DC have been around for a fucking eternity, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, they have not only been around for an eternity, I think the most important thing is they are attached to, the, and they've been, it's been this way for a while, okay? Um, uh, Warner, they've been attached to Warner for decades as far as DC is concerned. Um, Marvel, you got the toy biz and stuff, all the bailouts, all that. They've been attached to guys that are worth, or companies that are worth, or are spending billions of dollars, okay? That has a way of tricking people into believing that something is thriving when it is not. If you compare it to itself, all unit sales are down, right? Like tremendously. Like obviously, comics don't sell anything fucking near what they were what they had been selling uh over the past decades, right? But that's not the only thing to consider there. It's like, okay, as those billion dollar corporate entities start to have some sort of economic downturn like what you're seeing right now with disney like what you're seeing right now with uh with warner just i don't fucking know man they, they, there's so much debt and Detatron. yeah Detatron. they might combine with uh, paramount to, to make Detatron, right like i do think that there is a reality that people kind of understand with the mainstream publishers, particularly with Marvel and DC, who basically have the majority, vast, vast majority of market share in terms of the American publishing and comics and its influence. OK. People that may be on the outside looking in, the general customer needs to understand that if that shit goes away. If I had to put a number on it and I'm just kind of just flip, like, you know, making making something up. Sure. I would argue that 90% of the guys are, there's not going to be work for them. And I think they halfway are aware of that. Which is why they, number one, try to keep people that think a little differently out of that market, right? Uh, out of the mainstream. 
but also why they had been so protective of even if you saw the numbers they would always say well comics are doing great <laughs> it's a lie it's yeah. not true but they have to kind of trick themselves into believing it because could you imagine if dc tomorrow which is, look it's, it's unlikely same with a marvel if they said publication we're shutting the shit down we're, we're just shutting it down right now. We're, mm -hmm. we're, we're shutting it down. It's not, it's not worth the money that we're sinking into. It. We'll figure it out and reanalyze it later. There's not a whole lot of guys that can go for one, either do their own, um, or good enough to be hired by the independent guys that are doing well, right? There's just not a lot of money to go around. There's only a couple of entities that can afford to just shit out money and give it to people. And it's it's largely marvel and dc and that's about it all these other guys at the some point the bottom line matter really every mainstream comic book major publisher is attached to some sort of financing in terms of a, a group that they're connected to the same can be said for even the dark horses of the world like all of them they, they need something it, these guys are not able to exist on their own i think the last one that uh, uh like it's dark horse who who did that was that um because they recently, let me look that up real quick before I put my foot in my mouth uh, as far as Dark Horse uh, is concerned. Look this up real quick. So but even, even those that have talent. Well, th th don't, it's one thing to have talent. It's, the, it's know how to thing. market themselves either, though. That's, the de that's what I'm saying. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have the demand. Right. So yeah, so Dark Horse. Um went through damn man, this shit passed hands so much. Embracer Group, that's what it was. So yeah, yeah Embracer yeah, yeah. Group has them. And it, I looked it up, I did a video back in a gap, and I was looking up all of the major publishers, all of them. Like, are any of them existing as predominantly comic book companies under single ownership none of them are none of them all of them are attached to somebody else and to be fair it's been like that for like with a dc really for a long time like like i'm almost like years after the fact dc was even a thing you know you had other like newspaper fucking uh publishers that that that, that were owning it right because it was not able to exist on its own um I halfway believe, as I was saying earlier, that a lot of comic pros understand that and they're going to protect their bacon. I think that's why they get so defensive. Even when they get shat on, even when we talk about people getting paid late, people not getting paid right, right, people not getting paid um, in any capacity on time, they fight like hell to say, well, comics are doing great. Mm. Why? Because that's still a better, despite getting paid late, they're still getting better. They're still to them better than getting paid not at all because there's a lot of uncertainty bro if they go away dc and marvel goes away there's a lot of uncertainty that's going to come with that of course there is of course there is because they'll if they go away tomorrow they hold on to the ips of course the, yeah. the parent companies hold on to the ips yep they can sit on them and don't think that's not out of the realms of possibility i mean because if they're we, not making we, money in, off in, of in, putting in, that in, cut, why yeah. wouldn't they because so you, you not spending money and wait. Than spending money and losing it. Which is essentially what's ha probably most likely happening with DC Marvel right now. Yeah. They are just money pits. Yeah. What but they're tolerable money pits because you can have a Tedatron. Yeah. <laughs> True. Fact. Fact. So th th that's why I think a lot of these cats lash out in the way that they do. It all boils down to job security we talked about this with razor fist a lot of it's job security and fear because i mean you've seen even a fucking keanu reeves he can do his fucking crowdfunding and go on fucking jimmy kimmel and all that shit mm -hmm. still i think I'm, I'm on pace to have a multiple campaigns that have beat that original berserker fucking shit and uh, i'm not yeah, saying yeah. it's to hype myself up i'm saying no 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 it, that's it's, fucking it, keanu reeves yes. bro on mainstream media on mainstream media and that's all he did you can't a big, do a, a fraction of that 
Well, yeah, because there's a big difference between trying to appeal to people and trying to appeal to your audience. Bingo. There, there's a, it's a completely different thing. Yes. If, if I went to a, the, the fucking um, horticultural fucking society tomorrow to do a speech about video games <laughs> or comics and then say, hope to have your business, I'm going to walk out there with fuck all. You ain't getting jacked. It's shit. just not that. It's just not the right audience. That's a fact. You say, okay, what about your DC movies and your Marvel movies? They're huge. They're massive. Loads of people go there. They they go watch the movies. Yeah, because that's that's the way that they consume that entertainment. That's the way that they're like. Oh, I like to go to the movies. Yeah, it doesn't mean that I would like to pick up a book, or pick yeah, up a comic, true. pick up a toy, pick yes. up a whatever it may be. I just like going out to the movies once every couple of months or so to see something, to get away, you know, to to just have a, a fun night out with the boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, husband, whatever. That's what. So you know, so Keanu, yeah, he can, he he got a lot of sales. He probably got a lot of sales uh, because there's Keanu fans, and there was some comic book fans as well. Going, all right, we'll give it a try. I got it. I got the three volumes mm -hmm. of it, but that 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 was really sort of it. In terms of that, someone like yourself, you've you've cultured a, an audience, you've cultured an audience in different different avenues, different areas, and you've you've hit, sort of hit a market at exactly the right time with exactly the right attitude, which again is completely different. Yeah, uh, you know, in, in, instead of um, trying to make conflicts, you're trying to make comics. There's there's a very different thing with that true. altogether as well. That's true. Your customers are feeling appreciated, they're feeling listened to. Uh, they're excited about taking the various characters that you've created and, and trying different things with them. And so far, you've hit four for four home runs. <laughs> yeah, four for fucking four. Yeah, is that is that always going to continue? You know, circumstances would would dictate probably not. But at the same time, there's a massive amount of momentum that's gone alongside of that. Mm -hmm. And that's not just momentum from you as a company. It's momentum from your audience have been like. This is good. This is yes, fun. Yeah. This is exciting. We feel for the first time in a long time that we're actually invested in something that is purely comic orientated as opposed to fucking drama shit yeah. and fucking shitting on people shit and showing people that you're a piece of fucking scum and all that kind of stuff and, and trying to turn it into wars and wars of words and wars of fucking baguettery. Yeah. No, it's just like, no, I feel like I've got a comic book company that's trying to produce comics. Yeah. A comic book company is trying to produce comics and they're trying to sell to me based on comics and not some fucking stupid ass uh other other thing uh, attached to it. Right, right. And, right. And, and and that's not what we've had with a lot of crowdfunding campaigns, and that's not what we've had with a lot of mainstream DC Marvels, image, all of that. Well, it, it, take image a little bit out of that. But DC Marvel, IDW, IDW let's bring, yeah. you know, something like that, which has always felt that way. You know, this is an audience just like, thank fuck. I just, I just want a company to buy some comics off and have a bit of fucking fun. Yeah. I want to see what's coming out on the campaign, what little treats are on the campaign, t-shirts, merch, slabs, all of the stuff which actual collectors love and appreciate and enjoy. We're bringing on industry fucking vets who know what the fuck they're doing. You know, Chuck Dixon, Mike Barron. Mm -hmm. We're bringing on fucking talent like the Saucer Sisters. You know, we, we, we actually have an in-house way of getting new artists yeah. into the industry. You know, we're going to do an art uh, competition. Yeah. What's the fucking prize? You get a fucking job. Yeah. You get yeah. a fucking job. Yeah. And and the chap that's uh, drawing the... Uh, oh, forget, Michael Martin. Me, Michael, who's drawing He's the, the uh, Blood Ruth comic. He's amazing. I'm not just loving the artwork on that. I'm loving the inks on that as yeah. well. Yeah. The art and the inks on that look fucking great. Yeah. And that's what a customer base actually wants. Fuck your baguette tree. Yeah. Nobody gives a fuck. Forget your stupid fucking, uh, oh, I don't like them because I'm a big fucking prick. You know, nobody gives a shit about that. That's what they're yeah. trying to avoid. That's what they've had rammed down their throats yep. for the past decade. Now they're just like, can we just buy some comics? Can we just have some fun? Can we just feel as if we're actually involved in something? That is, that is a cultural phenomenon. There's no denying that this is not a cultural phenomenon because it is. Because, and I say this with all the respect in the world, Eric, you created the Ripperverse when you had about, let's say, 400,000 subscribers, mm -hmm. okay? Those 400,000 subscribers were built off 
um, your, poli- your political ta- talks, mm-hmm. your pop culture talks, in- which included comics, of, of course, uh, and, and sort of your music. Yep. So those are like the three major factors of developing that audience. But you hit the right beats. And you went into the industries saying, I just want to create an alternative. And it was amazing that, that doing that created the, the phenomenon, which was the first item book, 3.7 million. Mm-hmm. Now, what does that say to me? That says you, you hit the right audience. You hit the right comic book audience. You hit the right pop culture audience. And more importantly, you hit the right attitude Yeah. when it came to the actual release of that. And, and uh, that has now spawned Isom 2, 2 point something million. Alpha Core, 1.3 million. Yaira, which is three weeks old, 1.3 million. Still got yeah. 60 fucking days left to run. Where is that going to end? Who fucking knows? We'll <laughs> you know, who, who fucking knows right now? And, and on top of that, afterwards, you've already got people set up. You've already got um, Mike Barron set up. Mm-hmm. You've already got Bloodroo set up. The Horseman set up. Mm-hmm. You've got the, these three set up, plus whatever you've got behind the scenes, which we don't know about right now, that we know shit's been worked on. Yeah. You have all of that in place ready. You've created an excitement and an interest within the industry, and you've created an excitement with, more importantly, customers. That's where it because starts. Because that's ideally just what we want at the end of the day. I was I was quite happy to give my support to people that were coming into the crowdfunding campaign saying, I just want to make comics. Well, we found out we found out that was just a fucking load of shite. Yeah. Yeah. And me, yeah. like like so many other people, just like that's all we want. We just want people who are coming here with with an attitude to create comics. I don't care where you vote. I don't it's give a, a fuck about important. the color of your fucking skin or what's between your legs or who you fucking sleep with in your bedroom. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I give a fuck about what you're producing, how you interact with your customers, what your ideas are, where you want to develop this company, what what you've who you're going to bring in from a talent perspective, what the options there. That's what I care about. Yeah. So far it's been massively successful. Yeah, it's not a fucking rocket science. I know no. some people treat it like it was, but <laughs> I mean, you you word everything there perfectly and like all of these different things that needed to happen for the Riververse to be successful as it is. And it's like, you know, I, I get it. There's a there's, there's, there's those out there that I, I believe that I should not be in the position uh, that I'm in, though. That it's not for them to fucking to determine. That's up to the customers. Um, but if it is a look, I'm not saying as far as the financial thing needs to be something that uh, is or can be replicated. But I will say this much. All of those things that you talked about and like that, that's from the general customer's perspective, right? It's like, look, my thing was the universe. That was a big selling point for us. I said, look, man, uh, what was really intriguing to me was this idea that you had all these characters. They were a little different um, and they all existed within the same universe. I thought that was a really cool thing. Um, uh, I want to make sure that that's something that we focus on as a company. So a lot of our uh, our target audience was centered around that. Our target audience was centered around people that, look, you want to get invested in something. You get to invest, get invested in this from the ground up. And I promise you to leave all the dumb shit at the at the door. Right. That was essentially all that it was. And it worked that r- way because of that. And look, the audience is, is a lot smarter than I think what people give them credit for and that they, they know come. what it is that they want. Um, and if you show them that you're willing to give them exactly that, they will reciprocate there, right? And, and they will show love. They will show love and support um, uh, to you because you're giving them that sort of uh, uh, th- that sandbox. And this is where the mainstream is fucking lost. And this is where, unfortunately, you get these people that are independent that have lost sight of that uh, as well. There's a lot of people that are out there that are replicating it, right? That are showing you there is a method of success. Um, out there, you got the river versus of the world. You got the uh, Graham Nolan's Compass Comics things that he's doing o- o- over there. You got my man Jimmy Palmiotti, who's OG, really in the crowdfunding uh, uh, space. You got my man's uh, there. It is. Uh, uh, it, you got like uh, the Brian Polito's of the world and everything that he's fucking um, uh, doing. I think I mentioned Tucci. There's a lot of guys that are uh, out there that are doing some amazing things. And it really boils down to what the what the 
common thing amongst all of those, if you bring up myself as well as all those people that I just mentioned, is that they focus on the comics per se. Like that's what it ultimately is about. And, and getting that shit to the customer, not disrespecting them. This is something that the mainstream has lost complete fucking sight of. And this is something that some people that aren't in the mainstream also replicate that uh, in which it's it's and then they get confused as to why these people start seeing the success. They think, oh, well, I'm better than that guy or uh, I, I'm a better artist than that guy. I'm a better writer than that guy. Why? Ain't, why am I not in that position? Well, stop. Stop counting another man's money. That's how you fucking stop that. Stop counting another man's fucking money and start working on your own. It's not a rocket science. It's not fucking <laughs> rocket science. And I don't even have a fucking business other than me. I'm my business. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. And, and they, again, oh, they Gary's just hit a million subs on that fucking. Up. No, well done, mate. Well done. Shut I'm going yep. to, I'm going to concentrate on what I'm doing. Yeah. That's what we do. That's how we react. And the audience sees that. And this is why they are they know they're getting invested in it. Because especially something like comics, right? Where there's a continuous investment, if you will. Like a, you, you're purchasing, you're keeping up with it, right? It's not a one-off, right? It's like, hey, this is the issue one. It's an ongoing series. Issue two, these things are going to continue. And if you're in our case, we have this big universe that we're trying to sell you on, right? You so, didn't hit a million done. <laughs> fucking bad. He'll be there soon enough. He'll be there soon enough. He'll be there next week. Yeah, he'll be there. Uh, but you see that, and the audience sees that. They're like, okay, and this is the this is the important thing. If they see that you're taking it serious, they're far more likely to get invested in it, right? And by taking it serious, I mean in all aspects. I'm not just talking about with like just the creative stuff. I'm talking business. I'm talking every fucking thing. Take the shit serious. Don't insult your fucking customers. And that is a recipe for success, right? If you focus on the other stupid shit, social justice nonsense. And look, uh, there's a lot of uh, the social bullshit that a lot of folks focus on that swings to the other side um, as well. We were talking about this on, um, I can't remember which, which one of the shows that I was on, which uh, with Neurotic and, uh, and, and, and George uh, John Slayer uh, this past Sunday. And we talked about, that very thing, right? The very thing of, well, you, how do I word this? So, so you got this company, right? You got a, you got a rip reverse. You got a, you, you, the other guys that I named, you got all these other guys. Um, it, it's an Uber, uh, competitive market. And, uh, we might not think a certain way. Um, or we may think differently, even comparison to each other, but that's not what fucking matters right the difference about i think between the quote-unquote right and the, and the quote-unquote left is that it's more uh they have a left has a little more power in that they control a lot of these mainstream sort of object that doesn't yeah, mean the, that the those, left control it the right don't give a fuck about it but want yeah. to complain about it there it is there it is right so but either way you cannot there's no there's no substitute for effort right there, there's no secret sauce that can replace that there's no well promote my shit uh or there's no it, it doesn't matter gary as and like in our corner geeks and gamers they could sing the praises of the riververse if we're not delivering none of that shit fucking matters exactly i can't i can't force anyone to make a purchase of anything right i, ca I can't talk anyone out of a cinema of a film that I watched, yeah, if they exactly. want to watch it. Yeah. Your customers are too smart for that. Your yes. audience are too smart for that. If they want to see it, they'll go see it. Rain yeah. or shine, shit or good. They'll go see it. Even if you've gone, I wouldn't go see it. Or if you go, I would go see it. Something I praised, uh, Mission Impossible. Mission Impossible came out the cinema, the latest one. Losing money. Yeah. I thought it was a great film. I can't talk people into... There you you go. know, I, I can't force anyone. I can recommend. I can do this. I can do that. But ultimately, when somebody gets a final product, when somebody gets a final product of a book, if they read that and go, this is damn good, that's your sell. Yeah. They've given yeah. you a try, and that's your sell. And if they pick it up and they go, ah, wasn't, wasn't massively keen on that, uh, then, then that's just like they tried it. It didn't work. When you start going to fucking war with everything, when you start insulting customers, 
insulting other people, when you start pushing identity politics or whatever politics it is, trying to ram all this stuff down people's throats, all you're doing is putting your audience, potential audiences off. And it's Bro, always, there are always people, talk about it, it's I, I the hate to get majority blunt. that walks away. I hate to be the, get blunt about this. There are people that are insulting our audience. And I'm like, this is the dumbest fucking thing you do. We got a bunch of guys that rock with us for us, right? Which means they're willing to buy comics, which means that probably if you sell comics, it's definitely to the degree that we do, and you want a little bit of that, the last thing you do is fucking insult them. But you got people that do that. It's the same shit the mainstream well, does. We exactly we said this about Dam Slot. Let's use Dam Slot as an example. That fucking little troglodyte. Uh, Dam Slot. When Dam Slot tells one specific customer on Twitter to to fuck off, it's not just that customer that goes away potentially. It's hundreds, if not thousands, more that go. Look at the way this guy is talking. Yep. To this. Yep. When when a when a mainstream comic book again, you Dan Slots. Let's use Dan Slot because he's a perfect example of a fucking retard. When he says, "Ah, you're not our audience. You're not our customers. So the stupid. comic book shop is our customers." And obviously, d uh, d showing you not just that they're fucking stupid, but an exact level of of disingenuousness because they know ultimately that the comic book shop gets the comics to sell to you. You are the customer. Yeah. The comic book shop is simply a facilitator because the company itself doesn't sell direct to customer. No, they that's, sell, they that's sell why. to the distributor, which sells to the fucking retailer. So once again, all you're saying to your customers are, we don't care about you. We don't give a shit about you. And we're going to try and gaslight you. And again, customers just walk away. They just walk away. They won't. They won't go on Twitter. The vast majority won't go. Vast majority of you, they will never You're be interactive. They will go never be away. interactive no. with you. They'll just they turn around, walk away. You'll never fucking see it. Yep. But you do see it when it comes to your sales. <sighs> yeah. What's the P in it? What's the What's the What's the You start yeah. to see it. Like, wait a minute. What the fuck? Shit's wait. down right now. That's where you see it because people are not into that shit. And this is why. Look, man. Um, if, if you aspire to do entertainment. It is right. And the way to do it is to simply create, focus on what it is that you're doing, and do not insult your own fucking customers. Show them that you care. Show them that you're working. Showing, show them that you are, um, you know, you're getting better. Show, show them, and they will. You can even slip up from time to time. But it they know that you give a shit, right? That matters so much to them. And especially in this day and age, and it's totally understandable because people have unfortunately had to find out the hard way that they may have been giving money, maybe kind of uh, in a roundabout way, giving money nonetheless to people that don't appreciate them, people that despise them, right? So now more than ever in the 2020s, people are looking and paying attention to what the creators are doing. And it's not, I'm not talking about in the political sense. Not, not That's not what I'm referring to. I'm just speaking in a general sense of hmm. uh, how you treat your customers, how you work on your project, how you present yourself uh, in, in that capacity. That's more or less what I'm, what I'm discussing. They are paying attention. They pay more attention to that than they ever have. So I use that to my advantage. Like, look, I'm not perfect. I'm not pretending to be perfect. But one thing that you can't fucking guarantee is that I'm going to give it a fucking shot and I'm going to work as hard as I fucking realistically can on, on the craft it is that that, that I have here. Uh, and, and, and investing in the Riververse is no better way that I can show you that I take this shit serious by uh, uh, showing you the projects that we're working on going into the future, delivering on everything it is that we said that we were going to fucking deliver on uh, when we said we are on and if there's any hiccups, making sure that we're communicating in the best way possible. Sh that's a way to show your audience as opposed to just telling you, hey, I care so much about you. Show them through your work and they will reward you unlike any fucking other. There are massive businesses that don't seem to fucking understand that. And there are smaller guys that have a bigger advantage that don't seem to understand that as well. Customer is fucking king. Fuck this internet, this 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 social bullshit. Fuck all this, uh, uh, all the cosigns. Fuck all that shit. At the end of the day, the peers 
Fuck uh, uh, the, the whole elitism bullshit. Fuck all that. Nobody cares. At the end of the day, it's about the customers. They are king. And the best way to show them that you give a fuck about what it is that you're investing in is putting your goddamn foot in it. And they will reward you as such. But some people don't understand that. A lot of big businesses don't understand it. We've seen that in major publishers. They don't understand that. And I hate to see there are smaller smaller companies as well as uh, 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 publishers that are self-publishing that don't seem to understand that aspect of it. And that is that customer is fucking king, bro. It is. There's no, there's, there's, there's no other way to fucking put that. And you show them you give a fuck, they'll reward you. It's not a rocket mm. science, bros. It's not. Apparently so. <laughs> That's true. Apparently it is because Apparently you get people that is, can't, is, can't yes. wrap their mind around it. How the fuck did the Ripperverse get a fourth million dollar campaign? He was supposed to be bankrupt by ISOM too. That that was supposed to happen. He did it once. So there's no fucking way he's going to do it again. Well, he did it a third time, right? Well, wait a minute. Okay, well, that, that, that there's no way. He can't do it a fuck again. Well, here we go. We're 60 days in, and we're already about to uh, pay. No, no, you're not sales, 60. You're about 22 to pass days in. You're 22 yeah. days yeah, in with 60 me, to go. Yeah, we got about 60 days to go, right? <laughs> we got about 60 days to go. Excuse me. That's how. And and, 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 and and it's not about, it's no need to be confused. It's just that, look, man, I care about this. I show them that I care about that. I've adjusted my own behavior in comparison to myself to make myself a better man as a business owner, to show these guys how much I give a fuck about what it is that I'm doing in this sandbox I'm trying to provide to all of these fucking customers. That's something, no matter the size of your company, if you replicate that aspect, it's not about doing everything the way that I did. It doesn't matter if you're doing uh, typical pre-orders, doesn't matter if you're crowdfunding, doesn't matter what it is you do. If you at least do that and focus on on showing your audience that you give a fuck about what you do, they will reward you. Simple. Don't be confused. You could think I'm the worst person in the world. You could think Eric sucks. Chuck Dixon, he's fell off the fucking uh, cliff. Uh, uh, apparently, the Saskas, they, they worship the fucking devil. They're the worst writers in the world. N nobody cares. Because they don't answer to that bullshit. Oh, no, they no, answer no, no, to no. the customers. So, some, so, yeah, somebody cares, and it's the customer. That's, yeah, yeah. That's ultimately who cares and who well, makes Well, about, who's about the like, the product being produced, yeah. yeah. But all the fluff, all the, like, nonsense, customers don't give a fuck about that. No, no. Because the, the, that's customers, not, you, the customers wait for the book, but the customer will decide based on the quality of the book, not the fluff around it. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's what they'll do. Th that's what they will decide. Do we, do we want this shit or do we not want this shit? And if they decide that they, that they want it, it's not for you to really understand if you are on the outside thinking that these are the worst group of guys in the fucking world. How the fuck can I be in that? Why am I in that position? That envy's a son of a bitch. <laughs> it is the green-eyed monster that does mock the flesh it feasts upon. It is a son of a bitch. It, it, it really is. And it is a driver negatively, albeit for a, for a lot of folk. Um, they see the landscape and they think of markets in a more socialistic way, right? Uh, in that somehow the Riververse existing is, um, is, is me it means that they can't also exist. Not how it works. Not how, if anything, let's say that we've introduced them, which we have. There's a lot of people that say, hey, man, Riververse, first, first comic I'm, I, I'm either ever got or it's the first comic book that i've uh that i've gotten like years in the years yeah right yeah. well that's a potential customer that's a guy that got back into the hobby right so many folks look would see that and maybe there's something else that they oh well i'm into this now i'm back in what else is out there right so the last thing that i think people should be doing which is fucking retarded and there are people that are banking on that hey you know, you see that 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 new company that's not even two years old that has had four million dollar campaigns which shows that there's a bunch of uh, uh, willing customers that are willing to pay money on comic book stuff. Yeah, why don't we just insult them? I I would take that as a potential creator, let's say, and be like, oh, there's a market here. Bingo. That's how you should take it. There's a market here. If I apply myself, if I, I approach a, a customer base with a with a 
you know, open, see, open and transparency and uh, just keep my uh, keep my shit to actual work. Oh, hell, maybe maybe, uh, maybe we can get in on that. I mean, ultimately, if you, and again, this is not a backhanded compliment, no disrespect. But if you did it, someone else can do it. Yep. That's it doesn't mean that because you did it, that that part is now somebody been can maybe off. do it better. Somebody, make, somebody can maybe do it better. They can maybe could, do it better could. and at a bigger at a bigger um uh, like uh maybe a faster pace. Sure can. Sure can. And and you know what? Because I, I'm not ran by envy. If someone can't Graham Nolan fucking game out tomorrow, Compass Compass announced, I don't know, whatever. Joe Frankenstein meets whatever. Ghost does six million dollars. I'm on the fucking moon for him. Yeah. I'm not knocking him. I'm not feeling some kind of way. I'm not saying those are my customers. He just took from me. <laughs> I'm mad. <laughs> nope. I'm like, he deserved every fucking bit of it. Uh, what can we do to get even more eyes on it, to get that number to rise as much as we realistically can? Um, and I'm looking at it from a business perspective, like maybe there's some new people that got in on the comic book industry. Uh, it makes far more sense for Graham and myself to be cordial and respectful to one another because he benefits from that. And so do I. That's how business business. That's how business works. Oh yeah. Well, it's called capitalism. Ain't that something? Yes. Yeah. Private ownership of goods and services and the free yeah. and voluntary exchange of those private goods and services. And what, what do you know? Yeah. You also have the right to burn yourself to the ground as well. If, if that's your thing, that's Capitalism your goes both ways, baby. If that if that's the route you want to go, you get to do that as well. Exactly what the mainstream have done. Yes, they have. Uh, and we've seen uh, unit sales are lower than they've ever been. Comics are thriving. Comic, hashtag also, what? comics broke me. <laughs> Ain't that something? How can both be happening, ask? Can you explain that to me? Real quick. Uh, it's how, the, how can the, comics be better at booming? <laughs> booming was the term that they used. Comics are comics fucking booming. 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 Hashtag, then hashtag comics broke me. How can how can both of those be true? Ugh, the dichotomy of man. Who make knows? that make sense. I can't. Maybe I, uh <laughs> maybe when they were doing comics broke me, they just had catastrophic time. <laughs> It was just a catastrophic month. <laughs> it's the catastrophic month. That's all that it was. Maybe that's what it, maybe maybe that's that's what happened. It was a catastrophic sure. month, but comics are fucking booming. Never <laughs> been better. Never been fucking better, bros. I'm just gonna I'm just doing a little comparison, by the way. Just internal comparison to uh I mean, Alpha Core did 1.3 million, which is crazy, mm -hmm. which is excellent. New characters, 1.3. Yaira is literally six and a half thousand away from, from matching that. Yeah, with uh, 60 days 60 to go. Days left to go. So to me, that says that people were very happy with Alpha Core. Mm hmm. That they continue to to go on to the next campaign. Imagine that. Crazy, huh? Imagine that. Imagine By the way, Al Alpha Core was a fantastic book oh, yeah. by Chuck. Shout that out, was Chuck. A fucking great book. Shout out, Chuck. Joe Ben. read it. But, um, oh, well, yeah, you never read anything. Nobody's ever read anything. Um, but I, I, I heard maybe. I well, Sorry, you paid me in, in the. Uh, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, on the yeah. table. Yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. Cheers, fam. Yeah, no problem. Uh, let's go through some supers. Let's do it. Before uh, before we end up speaking for another half hour. <laughs> and then just be like, hey. Hey, chat. Hey, chat. How you doing? You are right? <laughs> well, oh, you were here, huh? You've been here the whole time. The whole time, huh? Okay. Oh, hello. Uh, hello. <laughs> Defendo99 with the $5 says, it's a great day to microwave. <laughs> As malfunctions. Mods get in the fuck out of here. Get in the I don't know how to finish that off. 
comic misconceptions. I want to like you. Thanks. Steel Legged History with a 23 month membership it says, Have some great news after a year of physical therapy, my knee and stump are healing, and I soon will need a new fake leg made. Be blessed, Yarrow on Jen and Silv. Shout out, Steel Leg of History. Good to hear that. Keep it up, bro. Um, and I hope that, hope that, um, hope it keeps going well for you, man. I really do. Uh, be the silent games with the two dollars says, I bought a purple t shirt. That's very regal, by the way. Very regal color. It was a regal color, by the way, because purple was expensive. It's an expensive dye to make in medieval times. Mm. So if you were wearing purple, it said, I've got some cash. I'm a member of the higher, not the plebeians. Uh, uh, best name I could think of has been, it's kind of like wearing Supreme. <laughs> Best name I can think of gifting five memberships to the stream. Thank you. Always shirtless with the five dollars. God bless you, as Death blow your nose. Like, I love that. I'm never going to get sick of listening to that, by the way. This is meant to be death blow. Yes. In the words of <laughs> Sally Rodell. Yeah. Meant to be death blow. HTK bass player with a five dollars says, I want to apply for that warehouse job, but I'm not in Tyx IS. I'm trying to escape Cal California. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, you'd have to be there here to get I mean, look, Texas is a better place to be. I, I can tell you that much, HTK bass player. Chew boy. Uh CJ with a five dollar says, Beg seg, Mags is at it again. Hey, if you know a property lawyer. In the New York area, please <laughs> hit her up. Uh, please, Stat. please hit her up. Yeah. Stat. Stat. <laughs> Stat. That's what they said, man. You know, death blow. It's pretty good, eh? Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll cosplay Ira. <laughs> Netflix presents. <laughs> DC, DC and Marvel present Yara. <laughs> DC and Marvel presents uh, through Netflix, distributed by Netflix. Yara. I came from the planet Transcendia. <laughs> where, <laughs> where instead of like with America Chavez, everybody was woman. Everybody was trans actually yeah. on, on the planet. Everybody is born in one biological form, but always <laughs> identifies as the other. Transcendia is a <laughs> transcend <laughs> coming, coming this fall to the Ripperverse. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> As in full in sales. <laughs> oh boy. That, that, that you want to talk about bankrupting a company at one week. <laughs> <laughs> that would do it. Uh, Obi Pixel with a six month membership says, Hey, great folks, congrats on 1.3 mil. My two orders are in there. Yaira, you guys are my voice online. You've inspired me to write my 10th book. Hell yeah. Thank you. There you go. Hell yeah. Love to hear that, man. Keep that up. Yeah, boy. Uh, Graph Web with the two dollars says, For fuck's sake! Hashtag cancel Disney Plus. I have. I have. I can't even. I can't even bring myself to watch X Men ninety seven. I just don't care. Apathy is a wonderful thing. Man, tell me about it. Apathy doesn't make the heart do anything. Uh. That's very true. Pops with a fifty dollars says, "Congrats, Eric, Saska sisters, Deborah, other Eric." And Ripperverse team on Yaira One, fourth Ripperverse failed 100 million plus campaign. <laughs> and I'm proud to support. Looking forward to your talk with Kanan. Also, as really enjoyed your conversation with Kerry Smith. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you were there. And that episode did really well, man. Shout out. Uh, shout out, Kerry. Uh, Kerry's, uh, she's a wonderful person. And it was a, it was a really good conversation to have. So, you shout know, it's nice when you're going to have. Good conversations with people. 
Shout out Carrie, man. Um, but yeah, also big shout out to you. Appreciate that love uh, and support. Yes, uh, there is a good chat Caden and I had over on the Riververse channel, introducing you guys, letting you know all of what he does and story of working with the Riververse, everything. Uh, so you can go check that out. Halos Aru with a five dollars says, "I recommend you guys the Cayman Rider." Shows for good Japanese superhero action. I recommend Cayman Rider Geats. It's free on Shout Out uh, or Shout TV. Best show of 2022, 2023. I'm able to check that out. Uh, I need uh, I need some good shows to watch that aren't from the West. <laughs> Buddy Rabbit with a two dollars says hashtag release. Sorry, it's release the dope lid. <laughs> Everybody wants it. I know. I even got a fucking super chat on fucking real BBC yesterday. <laughs> saying talk to Eric. So I said, I'll talk to him today. I'll talk to him today. Yeah. 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 People are wanting that. They want that damn man. Lid. I'm gonna I'm 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 start having some conversations. There you go. There you go. Uh Benjamin Flensburg with a 20 Danish says, We love as Ripper. Oh wow. Oh wait. And that's <laughs> what you, you do in your spare time. Jesus. Benjamin. Not judging. Not judging. Do what you will. Ian Bear, yay! With a 20 New Zealand says, Dear Ripper Men, thanks for, among other Iron Ages guys, inspiring me to work on my novel, uh, a third done, also as I'm going through House Hunting 2. Trolley real estate agents at open homes is the most fun you can have. Maybe I'll just do that for a day. Just line up a bunch of uh, appointments and ask some of the most horrendous questions possible. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a whole thing, man. It's a whole thing. I've got my new bathroom coming in a month. I'm currently picking out the suite. Love to see it. Buddy Rabbit again with a $10 says, where's my hat, Black Stan Lee? Hashtag release man, the dope lid. so fucking pissed. And then now Jay and them call me Black Black Walt Disney. You're just fucking <laughs> fucking silly, man. <laughs> but you know, folks get fucking angry, man. Black Walt. <laughs> they, they fucking get angry. That is. <laughs> why? Why would they get angry? Get fucking mad at that. I, I don't understand. Relax. <laughs> Sit down. Take your bra off. Come on. Garfield's bizarre adventure. With a ten dollars, says, "Did you guys hear? Apparently, Ripperverse and its fans are all cultists. I know I am. In that case, I was going to ask when we attended the human f- uh, sacrifice ritual. <laughs> it was last week, dude. If you didn't, yeah, yeah, there. you might have missed out on it, man. Yeah. It was last last week, uh, Thursday, whatever. We we had it uh, one fifteen p.m. Um, yeah, we'll we'll be uh, back at it next month. All right, cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you guys uh, do you want to wear out our Ripperverse hoodies? Sure. Yeah, sure. You show up in the River City. That makes oh. sense. Uh, Buddy Rabbit again. <laughs> wow, he's really wanting this hat. With a ten dollars <laughs> says the only cult I'm in is the hashtag release the dope lid cult. <laughs> Where's my hat, Black Stanley? Time's up. Your one million dollar failure over the limit. Only a hat is going to save you now. I've heard you loud and clear. I he's, have. He's, he's been throwing a lot of coin for this hat. Yeah. A lot of coin for this hat. Serio, God of Rage, with the $20 says, on my way to the gym right now, it's back squat day. Got to follow the Silverbacks example and get a lift in. Rips no slouch either. Ha <laughs> ha. Much love to you both, Serio. Thank you very much indeed, dude. Shout out. Appreciate that. Yeah, I'm going to, after this, I'm going to go box. So, yeah. Ooh. Looking forward to it. Box down slot. <laughs> Young Sykes with a ten dollars says Heroes in Crisis was so damn dumb. Yes, it was. How the blue hell do you let Harley Quinn finesse Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman all at the same damn time? It makes no sense. Harley is not a thing. Oh, but they want her to be. Yeah, it was just a. The dumbest a, shit I've fucking seen. Yeah, it was that was that was bad, man. That was yeah. fucking bad. Uh, I wonder if uh I wonder if Tom literally did it 
so that uh, DC, he could be like, look, I just made a woman with no powers dominant over the greatest heroes ever. Well That's done. Great. great job, Tom. Uh, ship it. It's made the three best heroes in DC look like fucking retard. Yeah, yeah. but Harley Quinn, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Uh, not really, though. Uh, Cali off with the five dollars says, Go Media just put the onion up for sale. What a surprise! I'm gonna do my shock face. Why not Kotaku? Like, oh, dude, it's it's on strings. Like, I mean, why, why start already... with the onion? Well, the onion went. Uh, uh, oh, dude! I didn't even. How did I, I make that love, story? That did happen. I used to love yesterday. the onion. I used I to love I'm, the onion. Yeah, like I would think that Kotaku's far more likely to go under. Which but they've already may, put they've already put it in place. They've told them they have to churn out fifty game reviews a week, and that's they're not doing that, and so. not talk about fucking politics. And so they're just all going to quit, and then you go, you have to shut it down. So they are, they are, they have got the uh, the plan in place to shut Kotaku down. They're giving them the option to quit before they before they uh, even entertain severances. There's no fucking way, bro. Um, the onion went full orange man bad. It was such a great fucking site. It was such a great website, so funny. And then it just it just went full fucking far left retard. Such a shame. And then the Babylon Bee just took over, trying to just you know, yeah, satirize. The Babylon Bee just destroyed them at their own fucking yeah. game. Yeah. That was uh But unfortunately for the Babylon B, all their satire is coming true. True. Yeah, I, how did I miss that story? It happened yesterday. Yep, former Desperate owner Geo Media puts the onion up for sale. Oh, uh, hi. Yeah, that that that's um, that's crazy. Can't believe I didn't cover that. Uh, yeah, that means Kotaku's next. One thousand percent. It it has. To, there's no who the long over you. Whoever, yeah, man, whoever buys it though is getting changed because I don't know how much. That's why would be you? Worth. Why would you buy these things? I, I saw somebody say, "Well, why not Rupert buy Kotaku?" Why? It, it, it'd have to be access to the to the. Uh... I could. They, would, they wouldn't give you access. It's the moment you well, bought that, it, that, you, that, it'd be, it'd be, the access would be. Yeah. It will be cut if, they, if they gave you access to everything, I could see it being worth it for two reasons. One, because of like you know email lists and all that other shit, right? Sure. Data basically is what yeah, you're yeah, data, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, the other would be to show how filthy it was. Who oh, doing Elon? Doing Elon basically show how filthy it is. For, for those two reasons, I could see it worth someone um buying it for sure. Who's it? That that uh, that K Kataka reporter, the prostitute. <laughs> self self confess prostitute. You can delete the tweet, but people got it. You 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 said yourself, you suck dick for money. You're a prostitute. <laughs> you're a whore. Um, they uh. Every single thing they've tried to do, they've just failed at miserably. To uh, to uh, the whole GamerGate two thing. Everything they've tried to do, they tried to to ban that guy. Failed. They went to uh, mainstream press. They did a an interview on to cancel people. Failed. Go after other gamers. Failed. They got no they got nothing. They can't. They can't do a thing because because nobody gives a fuck about this mainstream area anymore. It's dead. It's dead. And now was it Black Girl Magic or whatever the fuck that organization's called? Oh, uh, what is it? Black Girl, Black Girl Gamers? Gamers or something like that? Yeah, something like that. BGGs for the the whatever. Uh, they're now threatening to sue people who were literally calling out their hiring practices that they they discriminated put up themselves. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's not going to work either. 
can you create a lawsuit against somebody? That person is going to destroy you in court. And then you're going to pay their lawyer fees. <laughs> their attorney fees. And, the, and I would probably counter sue them for, uh, you know, for, for, you know, attempting to, to fuck you up. What, you know, I'll have to get some yeah. legal fucking thing for it. But then, uh, you know, you counter sue and you put them out of business. Yeah, um, that's going to be interesting, man. I am. Kotaku's got to be on fucking, I mean. Threads. It's, on, it's been on threads for I mean, six fuck. years. The thinnest, it would have gone under in 2020 if it wasn't for the Summer of Love. Yeah, that 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 kind of gave everybody a jolt. Yeah. Um, back. Yeah, it's like they're like on the edge, Dragon Dogma uh, <laughs> reference, on the edge of like, you know, the water where like you get too deep in there, that bile starts fucking like getting it. Yeah, they're, yeah, like, yeah. they're like right there, man. They're like, <laughs> Wow, like oh, is 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 reaching for him, man. <laughs> They're fucking gonna get you. They're almost they there. Drag man. you down. <laughs> Ironically, it's uh it's been a bucket of crabs for a long time, though. Yeah, true that. Uh over anxiously waiting Yaira's arrival. I'm off to anime Boston. Uh all the best, Refinty and Hail. Shout out. Shout out. Josh Kelsey. Coming in, Brian, slapping a 20. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Slapping. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I thought you said Brian for a second then. And, oh, no. uh, <laughs> We're not talking was... about Max, man. <laughs> Be Be the best seg was at the beginning of the show. My bad. <laughs> My bad. Josh Kelsey dropping a 20 in the chat. Thank you, Josh. Stitch with a seven month membership. Appreciate you, Stitch. L, uh, TL with a $20 as well slapped on the counter. And then renewing their YouTube membership for 27 oh, months. Damn. Absolutely loving this stream with you guys. Look forward to it. every week. Oh, yeah, man. Yet somehow still ends up coming in late, being sidetracked by Gary. Hey, it's all gravy, baby. Oh, Lord, man. It's all gravy, baby. Thunder Thumbs with a ten dollars says as I don't know if you saw, but a new major order has been sent. Time to spill some oil for Liberty. Rip, you're a role model for younger creators. Whether you accept it or not, keep this train a rolling. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you. I'm actually going to be doing some uh, off-stream Hell Divers tonight, chat. A word. I will be doing With, a lot uh, to lost after I box. I'm playing fucking oof. dragon. I also got we're gonna do a video of me talking about it. I need to record myself playing it out also. So uh yes, sir. Heavy. Uh, Bredica six with a five dollars is working on my new fantasy series, and you get to read the first sentence in the beginning was Adio, and Adio was the beginning. If I've pronounced that correctly. Lucas Garrett with a $10 says, if I had Kazaku, I would fire everyone there and concentrate my content on manga, uh, manhwa, anime, and gaming. I don't give a damn about your politics. I care about those subjects listed. Well, I mean, that is what Kotaku should be. Should be just gaming articles, gaming reviews, maybe bring in anime, God, maybe, maybe bring in some other pop culture stuff to uh to expand a wee bit, but that's that's what you have to do. But when you destroy your brand because you bring on a bunch of fucking weirdos, but then again, when it's bought out by a company that wants to bring on the fucking weirdos, you get what you fucking deserve, you get what you fucking deserve, and uh, Kotaku can't go out of business uh any quicker. Is there anything you'd like to plug before we go, sir? Yara one. We're keeping this at two hours today. I'm well, look at us it. actually being on time. Check, yeah, us, check, check us out. Shout uh, out Elton John. Yeah, yeah man. Without we ain't you. got about you, Tim Sheridan, man. Yeah. Hit us up, Without bro. You. We'll get on the show. Um, but yeah, Yara one uh, is my focus still. We are uh, working on just everything Ripperverse right now. So if you have not got in on a Yara, uh, go to reverse.com slash Yaira and you can get it pre-ordered right now. 
Um, I, again, when I when I do get a little bit of time, I am back to gaming. Uh, it's in spurts, hour here, hour there. Uh, playing Dragon's Dog, one absolutely having a lot of fun on it. Um, I was really anticipating this game, and it is living up to the hype for me uh, thus far. But uh, yeah, that's what I've been doing. That's what I'm gonna be doing. And uh, that's I think I don't know if I'll stream again this week. We'll see. But uh, yeah, just go get Yaira. That that that'll be what I leave you with. Go get Yaira. Uh, link to the campaign pinned in the uh, top here. It'll also be in the comment section. If you're watching this back uh, later on, Sheepsidian dropping a quick 10 bucks for the castle. I put it in the book while, you, while I saw that. Uh, I'm going to screenshot my pawn and post it on socials. The game is far better than the first, especially when it comes to combat. I never played the first. And uh, I'm loving the second. And I'm loving the fact that you pick other people's pawns and then uh, you can play with them if you want. That's, fucking, get... that's such a good fucking like. Um... Thing because it's funny, yeah. like uh, the guy I play with all the time uh, on, on stream, Napa. I realized he had used my pawn, uh, and I, I got a bunch of shit from it. And then I went to you because you know, if you go search for it, you can search for like your friend stuff. And I yeah. think you can even like fucking bring them on. Uh, at least I could bring his on for fucking free. And it happened to be a mage, which is what I needed in my in my fucking uh party. Such a cool concept, really, really, mm. really fucking cool concept. But yeah, it, it's uh for sure a um it's it's way better than the the first one, which I absolutely loved. Um, and that's saying a lot. I've been praising this definitely on how to deal with bigger enemies. I wish other games oh, would deal with that. Uh, deal with it like them, that. You can jump on up on a climb. This oh. is one of my one of my biggest. I, 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 I know I love Elden Ring, but the, where where it still to me lacks is. When I'm fighting a fucking dragon, I'm tickling his toes. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. On, on like games like that, whereas um, I can get on. Uh, there's dragons and obviously dragons, oh, yeah. and I could climb them and stab him in his fucking face. And and I love that. I fucking lo I love it. Just it feels like there's weight to to actually fighting these bigger enemies, man. And I absolutely love it. Yeah, no, it's been it's been a lot of fun so far, man. A lot of fun so far uh yaira is just over five thousand away from 1.3 million right there y'all right there failing every day man bankrupt all day Damn every day it. somehow how, how do i keep doing it i don't know I think i was kotaku or something man no uh way. yeah kotaku came in and they they uh they spent all their remaining money on uh <laughs> on the riververse on the Ripperverse, yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, chat, uh, tomorrow, let's uh, let's see if we get some Dragon's Dogma 2 going tomorrow. Big sesh. Let's get a big sesh of that going. Friday, Friday Night Tights. We got uh, It's a Gundam this week. Oh, shout out. Uh, Saturday and well, Sunday afternoon tea with Az. Plus Sunday fun day. And Saturday, let's uh, let's let's do something Saturday as well, and maybe with some more Dragon's Dogma, maybe uh, Final Fantasy. We'll see. We'll we'll do something on uh, Saturday as well, though, uh, to to end the month on a on a high. Uh, so massive thank you, everyone who came to watch today, mods. Thank you so much indeed for giving up your free time. Everybody who super chatted, membered, remembered, gifted memberships. Thank you for supporting the channel. We'll be back next week over on Eric's channel. Until then, yep. you take care. Goodbye, Blue Boo.